Hi, I'm Matt Gordon, and this is Getting Started with MicRim OS. How does the MicRim OS kernel schedule tasks? Today we'll find out as we take a look at the kernel scheduling policy. Let's start with a few general scheduling concepts. The scheduling decisions made by a kernel determine the flow of execution from one task to another. There are numerous different scheduling policies, and there are countless ways to implement those policies. But most popular kernels take one of two broad approaches to multitasking, cooperative scheduling or preemptive scheduling. In commercial real-time kernels, preemptive scheduling seems to have become dominant. But we'll consider both approaches before discussing scheduling in MicRim OS. Let's start with cooperative scheduling. The key idea behind a cooperative scheduler is run to completion. This means that once a task is given control of the CPU, it won't relinquish control until it completes. A task might complete as a result of a kernel function call, or that task might simply return. Either way, tasks scheduled under this type of policy must cooperate by completing in a timely manner so the CPU can be used efficiently. We discussed foreground background systems in an earlier episode, and we talked about how these systems differ from their multitask counterparts. However, the foreground-background approach does provide us with a simple example of the run-to-completion concept. This execution diagram shows us the potential ramifications of a cooperative scheduler and the run-to-completion paradigm. The diagram illustrates the execution of two tasks, labeled task A and task B. It also shows an interrupt service routine, or an ISR. In this case, the ISR might handle a few lightweight operations, such as clearing the interrupt flag. And the task would take on more processor-intensive work. It's common for developers to structure code this way to minimize time spent in ISRs. The rationale is that ISRs are difficult to debug, and they steal CPU time otherwise available for background code. So let's see how the run to completion model works. At the start of the time period depicted in the diagram, task B is executing. But control of the CPU is soon taken away from this task by the ISR. The ISR is an indication that an important event has occurred, and that task A should start processing the data being received. But, under a cooperative scheduler, task A would not be able to run until the completion of task B. Thus, the work of processing any data received through the ISR could be substantially delayed. Under preemptive scheduler, the combination of the two tasks in the ISR would work a bit differently. When you're working with a preemptive kernel, you can assign an importance, or priority, to each of your tasks. So, in this diagram, the tasks are labeled high priority and low priority. We see that initially, the low priority task is running. This matches what we saw in the previous diagram with task B initially in control of the CPU. But here, we can see that the low priority task does not resume execution following the ISR as task B did. Instead, the scheduler gives control of the CPU to the high priority task. So, this diagram shows us a unique aspect of preemptive scheduling. When a new task executes, it's not always because another task relinquished control of the CPU. A high priority task can actually take control of the CPU from a lower priority task. In other words, one task can preempt another. This mechanism facilitates the development of highly responsive code that doesn't depend heavily on difficult to manage ISRs. With preemptive scheduling, we're normally dealing with tasks of different priorities. For applications with tasks of equal priority, there's another algorithm we can consider. This is called round robin scheduling. A kernel that implements round-robin scheduling manages tasks by running each for a predetermined period of time. Scheduling here is purely time-based, and this is why the term time slice often comes up in discussions about the round-robin algorithm. The kernel slices up the CPU's time and gives a portion to each task. Once a task is run for its designated time, the kernel gives control of the CPU to another task, regardless of what operations the original task may be performing. So, which approach does MicRim OS use? The scheduler provided by the MicRim OS kernel is, first and foremost, a preemptive one. When you're using the scheduler in this capacity, you normally assign unique priorities to each of your tasks. And the kernel scheduler always runs the highest priority task that is actually ready to be run. As we'll see in more detail in future episodes, there are a number of reasons why a task might not be ready to run at a given time. For example, it might be waiting for a message to be placed in a queue. Or it may have simply delayed itself. Whenever a running task enters a not ready or waiting state, regardless of the cause, the kernel invokes its scheduler. The scheduler is also invoked when a task goes in the reverse direction, from ready to waiting. 
This might happen due to the arrival of data from a peripheral device or the reception of a signal from another task. And what about the scheduler itself? There's a tendency to think of the scheduler as a task or ISR. However, it's really just a small piece of code that runs as a result of task state transitions, as we've just discussed. After each transition, the scheduler examines all of the tasks that are in the ready state, and it ensures that the highest priority of these tasks has control of the CPU. In one of the data structures used by the scheduler, task priority levels are represented by bits. A zero bit indicates that there is no task in the ready state at the corresponding priority, and a one bit indicates that there is a task in the ready state. The code that accesses this data structure is actually part of the hardware-specific portion of the CPU block. We covered this portion of a typical MICRIM OS project in a past episode. The CPU block's code can be written to take advantage of lookup tables or even assembly language instructions to rapidly locate the non-zero bits of ready-to-run tasks. Efficient, preemptive scheduling lies at the heart of MICRIM OS, but the kernel is also capable of scheduling tasks according to the round-robin algorithm. Round-robin scheduling does not happen automatically. It is performed only if you have enabled it explicitly through the combination of a configuration constant and a function call. When it's enabled and tasks of equal priority are present in the application, the kernel will run each of those tasks for a period of time that you specify. So, to sum up what we covered today, a kernel scheduler is intended to manage the flow of execution in a multitask system from one task to another. We covered three kinds of scheduling, cooperative scheduling, preemptive scheduling, and round-robin scheduling. MICRIM OS primarily uses preemptive scheduling, but it can use the round-robin algorithm in specific situations. Preemptive multitasking is highly dependent on interrupts, but we haven't yet covered interrupt handling in MICRIM OS. That's the topic for our next episode. See you next time. <laughs>